Welcome back to WebRTC Tips by WebRTC Ventures. I'm Aaron Syme, CEO and founder at WebRTC Ventures, and we're here to bring you another tip for using WebRTC in live video applications. Today, Armand Goldenstein, a senior WebRTC engineer in our team, is going to talk to us about using DTX for audio optimization and it's a really powerful technique, particularly in group calls. So with, without any further delay, here's Armand. Thank you, Arin. So I'm going to share with you guys one thing that I have recently learned, which is discontinuous transmission or DTX. So uh, what is DTX? So basically it is an advanced configuration for a Opus Audio codec that allows to reduce up to 16 times the, the audio traffic when a participant is uh, silent. So when DTX is enabled, parts of the silent audio packets won't be transmitted uh, to, the, to the receiver, saving bandwidth and CPU usage, especially on large multi-party sessions where you typically have a small uh, number of participants talking and the rest, the others, uh, have the audio uh, on mute. So this is a trade-off. The pros is that uh, we have, we are saving bandwidth and CPU usage. Why bandwidth? Just because we send less packets over the network. And we are also saving CPU usage because the receiver, the other peer, will be decoding less uh, audio packets. So this is a cool thing. Um, a cons is that the audio quality will be a bit lower than with continuous transmission, which is the default behavior when DTX, DTX is disabled. Although the difference is not a really noticeable. Um, the last point is that I think that uh, it is important to consider that regarding the specification, this continuous transmission is recommended, especially when constraints on uh, the network bandwidth are severe or uh, when you need to reduce the, the bit rate. So yeah, demo time. Let me uh, share my screen. I'm going to show you this in action. Um, hold on, please. All right. Okay, so you see my screen, right? Okay, so basically I have written a, a small POC, a proof of concept. The idea behind this is to show you the difference between a call using DPX or having DTX disabled, okay? So by default, as I told you, it is disabled. So let's see the number of packets sent per second. Okay, so I'm going to click here. Do you see my my local uh, stream there? Yeah. So I'm going to call the other peer. Okay, as, as you can see, the number of uh, packets sent per second is around 50. Okay, so I'm going to end this call and start a new call with DTX enabled. And as you can see, the number of packets sent per second for the audio, it's around three, two. So as you can see, the number is much lower. Okay, so yeah, it worked. Let me stop sharing one second and let me put the slides. Okay. Cool. Uh, let me go to the next slide. Perfect. So let's see now how uh, how uh, can we enable DTX. Just to give you more context, when two clients or peers want to establish a WebRTC communication, they exchange information which is known as uh, the offer and the answer and part of this information describes what video and audio codecs will be used and the configuration for each codec. So the information that is in the offer and in the answer is called SDP or 
session description protocol and it's look it, it looks like this like a like a large text that can have more than 100 lines and as you can see it's it's difficult to read so what we need to do to enable this is the following firstly you need to find the line in the sdp that uh, has the opus codec so in this case i'm highlighting the first line and as you can see it begins with a equal rtmp map and you see a number there that is 111 that is the payload type which is a number basically that identifies opus so with this number we need to find the second line that i'm highlighting with the format parameter which begins with a equal fmtp and you see there again the 111 so once we identify the line we just need to add the property use use dtx equal one this one means that is going to be uh, enabled. So that is, that's it. Um, this process that uh, I just described of modifying the, the SDP before uh, attaching it to the peer connection is known as SDP managing, okay? And this is the way we have to set some uh, advanced uh, properties like this one. So yeah. Uh, I hope you find it uh, interesting. All right. Thanks, Herman. Really appreciate you sharing that information about DTX with us today in this WebRTC tip by WebRTC Ventures. If you're interested in getting some help building your live video application for web or mobile, that's what we do here at WebRTC Ventures. Just reach out to us for more information or a quote. You can go to webrtc.ventures and contact us there. You can also follow us on Twitter at WebRTC Ventures. Thanks again for joining us for this WebRTC tip by WebRTC Ventures. Let's make it live.